July 30th, 2005, item number 69. Today's guest is Don Larson from the Digital Passages Podcast. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Rob, and this is the Podcast 411 Podcast. Before we get into the interview with Don, a couple of quick news and notes. First, if you'd like to see our latest test results, go to podcast411.com, click on Show Notes under the Digital Passages Podcast, and then click on Test Results. We're going to go ahead and play right now another tech tip from Michael Carino. Hello, this is Michael Carino from the Digital Media Cast Experiment with another Podcast 411 tip. This tip is aimed more toward the guys. Gentlemen, do you see that knob on your mixing board that says either bass or low? Neither bass nor low are Latin for testosterone. I was talking with professional audio producer Chris Jensen the other day, and he told me about something that guys had a tendency to do, and that is to turn up the low frequencies on their vocals. I almost laughed, but then I remembered doing something like that myself. Here's why it doesn't work. The most understandable part of the human voice is the mid-range, about 4 to 8 kilohertz. Granted, too much of this can be annoying, but not enough and your voice will get lost in the mix. Too much bass, as some guys like to do, will just make your voice boomy, but not very understandable. That part of the sound spectrum is made for bass guitars, bass drums, and cannons, so unless you shoot a cannonball out of your mouth when you speak, it's best you leave that one alone. In general, if you're in doubt about how to EQ your voice, just leave it all in the middle, usually where the notch is. If you're recording, you can always go back in the mix and tweak the voice to taste. Attempting to correct over-EQ'd audio is usually time-consuming and doesn't sound that good in the end. Also, when you mix, try different sets of speakers, or better yet, get a set of reference speakers. Usually mixing in your headphones or with your laptop speakers results in unpredictable end product. The best thing to do, though, is practice, and that's what I'm going to do right after this announcement. Thanks, Rob, for letting me talk to your audience. Michael, thanks again once more for the tech tip. If you out there would like to contribute a tech tip, news, or some sort of rant about podcasting, please send the MP3 file to podcast411 at gmail.com. would love to hear from you and spread your knowledge and thoughts with everyone else out there. Well, that's going to do it for us on the news and notes today. We're going to go ahead and get right into the interview here with Don Larson. But first, a quick introduction on the Digital Passages podcast. It's a podcast about interviews, technology, commentary, and storytelling that Don tells through the podcast itself. Don has been doing this podcast since October of 2004, so he's one of the lunatic fringe of podcasting. And we're going to go ahead right now and get into the interview with Don. Here we go. Donald, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, traditional first question, and what was your first computer? My first computer was a TRS-80 16K cassette tape storage system. I just passed on June 20th. That was my 25th year in computer technology, and that was my first computer. Let's uh, talk a little on the podcasting side. Uh, What was the first podcast you listened to? First podcast I listened to, I listened to it partially, was probably one of Adam Curry's podcasts back in probably September. I, I listened to one or two, not completely... But I started to catch the drift of the popularity back towards the end of September. So that would probably be it. And then I started in early October. I noticed your first podcast was October 9th. So you are one of the very first ones. I mean, when you put it up, there couldn't have been 100 people at that time doing podcasts. Yeah, there There probably weren't too many. But I... You know, the Internet age flies by at light speed, and so I think you, I, I think I was probably about three weeks after the first time that I started really hearing about podcast on David Weiner's, Dave Weiner's site. And so three weeks is a long time in this industry, and so I'm not sure I'm a beginner. <laughs> but, yeah, I've, my first one was back in October. Uh, what other podcasts are you listening to now? Well, I have a friend... Uh, 
Adam, and he has one. I can't think of the name right now. He's in my computer group, and he has a very popular one. He has about 2,500 listeners, he tells me, and he's using up huge gigabytes of storage each month. But he likes it. He's about 33 or 34 years old, I think. Is that Adam from the MacCast? Is it a Mac-oriented one? Yes, yeah, that, that yeah, that's Adam from the Madcast. Yeah, he's yeah. got. I listen. That's I listen to it. So it's one of the ones I'm subscribed to. Yeah, he he's on the other side of the mountains from me over here. In fact, we're doing a presentation together next Wednesday at our Mac Club on podcasting. Okay, I, I presented to our Mac Club here in Kansas City two two three months ago. I said, "Hey, I want to do a presentation on podcasting," and they're like, "No, we don't want to do anything <laughs> with it." So they, you know, we we had a meeting. We don't want to do anything about it. We're, we're booked up. What we're, we're, we're going to present between now and November? I mean, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. I mean, these yeah. are supposed to be Mac people. Are supposed to be you know. You, you think a Mac group is going to be forward looking and progressive and, and thoughts? I'm like, look, all I want to do is just talk to people and tell them about podcasting. And, you know, and then after the meetings, people are coming over, going, "Hey, I hear you do a podcast. Can you tell me more about it?" Yeah, I know. It's there, there's sometimes people catch the wave later than uh, than others. <laughs> the Kansas City Mac user group is behind the times when it comes to podcasting, and I'm going to leave that in to embarrass them because they're falling behind. You got to get yeah. up with it, guys. Come on, get with it. Keep at it. That's the only way to get them. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody in the Kansas City user group that's listening put the pressure <laughs> on the guys up top? Tell them you want to hear a presentation on podcasting. There you go. But other than um, Adam, uh, what other ones are you are you listening to? Once in a while, I'll listen to Dave Weiner when he does one on scripting news. <laughs> Some of the times that I'm more likely to listen to is when he's doing these thundercasts. I don't know if you've heard any of those. <laughs> yeah, yes, I have. Where he sticks the mic out and yeah, he sticks yeah. the mic out. See, I miss thunderstorms from being from Chicago. I, I that's the one thing I do miss. And out here, we don't have them hardly ever. And when we do have them, they're very mild. And so, to, for me to hear a thundercast, I, I listened to most of the ones that he did like that, and they were they helped soothe me. But uh, I don't listen to too many podcasts, uh, uh, to be honest with you. I, I do more of web surfing than podcast listening. So I'm sort of one sided in that way. Let's talk a little bit about your podcast. Like like we mentioned earlier, you started October 9th, 2004, so definitely one of the very first people podcasting, one of the early group. What's your podcast about? To explain to my listeners. I basically have three main segments that I target on my podcast show. One is interviews. I try to do different interviews with people, not necessarily on technology. And so far, I've had three different people that I've interviewed, and I have some more that I will be doing in the next month or two. The other side of it is I often do technology commentary. As I said, I've been involved with technology for over 25 years. And from time to time, I'll get on here and say something about what I'm doing or what somebody else has has done. And then the third area is storytelling. I'm a digital artist in addition to my technology background. And I like to do storytelling about life experiences. And so I have that section on my podcast site as well. Basically, those three. I really like the interviewing. I'm still evolving my interviewing style. But I like the idea of of getting other people who probably wouldn't have a chance to get on the net a chance to talk about their interests, whatever they might be. Yesterday, I did one on one of my friends. She just received her doctorate in history, and we talked about her dissertation and some other th- thoughts. So it's a chance to get information from her. She, she likely wouldn't have a way to do any kind of podcast or weblog. She's not into that. So here's a way to present her information out to the world at large, and maybe somebody will find interest in what she worked on yeah i just i listened to the the interview um that was put up i guess it was yesterday yes it was it was interesting to hear her talk about the fact that you know she'd been in school for the last 10 years and, yeah. and, and you know <laughs> it, all of a sudden uh, the, the regiment's changing on her and you know she realized that when she was filling out the paperwork she stated that uh oh my god you know the last 10 years uh, i've been in school so yeah. that's got to really be a strange feeling for someone, you know. It's a, the, the old cleaning out your locker at the end of school feeling. A few weeks ago, she had mentioned that she had been in school since essentially age four. And so I just was stunned that anybody could stay at it that long. But she certainly is a natural, not only at studying, but being able to, you know, be able to do other things while she's doing all that work. So 
I mean, she's she's an interesting person, and I, I think she's going to do well uh, in the years to come. She mentioned in there that she had put off the child bearing until she got through school, so now, yeah. now you know, she's going to enter, go right from schooling to raising, it sounds yeah. like. Yeah, she'd like to, they'd like to have a family. I only met her husband one time, and that was very briefly. But he's a physicist, and and so those two will be uh, good parents, not just because of their their careers, but I mean, they're, they're good people anyways. It, it, you know, it's an interesting time for people to have to get certain things in order and then be into the child rearing years. So, you know, I'm happy for them. I'm happy for her. And, and, you know, it's a good thing, but it is difficult. And that's why she was gracious enough to, you know, tell me about some of those experiences on there. Because I think other people have those same concerns. What if I go back to school? What about this? What about that? Everybody asks those questions. So here's, here's one person's point of view that did it. Uh, and now she's into the next phase now how do you choose your subjects to bring them on your show is there something that you're looking for a theme or are you trying to make no theme well there's a theme in the sense that for instance i interviewed one of my former partners mark riser and he has a spam uh, fighting product and we talked about not so much his product but just the idea of spam and ways to fight it or the legal implications and i figured that was an important topic for people to maybe want to listen to. And in fact, those have been the second highest category that people have really downloaded them. I've had a lot of downloads. And the other interview I had was with my friend Gene Weed, who has 40 years in the entertainment industry and has a lot to say. And he's a sound engineer by trade. And he gave uh, we gave a podcast where he was telling me some things about sound filtering, which is the topmost download that I've had since I've been doing these things. So I try to find things that people will find interesting, but they're also interesting enough for me to be able to ask questions. And I'm trying to get better at at asking probative questions so that the main idea is explained in better detail. So I don't necessarily have a theme right off, but I know the people well enough to when they start talking to lead them along and i'm continuing to improve that process for instance you're calling me today we've never met or talked before all we did was exchange a couple emails i'm not sure how well i would do if this call was reversed where i was interviewing (laughs) you because i don't know you and my style is more of you know i know somebody so i know a way to help talk to them where talking to a total stranger in an interview would be harder Going forward on your podcast, uh, what is there anything you plan on adding or doing different or um, some things that your listeners can look forward to? Well, I've asked some of my friends to do additional interviews. One of them is somebody who is retired from active work but works very heavily with the United Nations on some departmental aspects. And he's a very nice man. I've known him for almost a year now, and I've asked him, and he he said he will do one, and that will probably be in August sometime because he's going over to Scotland for some vacation. And I have another friend who's used to be in the pharmaceutical business but now has her own real estate business and she's going to i believe we're going to be talking about her real estate experiences because there's people who like to get out of the corporate world and into their own things and one of the places people are getting into is real estate and then i have another interview coming up with somebody who runs the one of the parks here in carlsbad and i'm a volunteer at that park and we're going to be talking about his experiences with the leo Carrillo ranch i believe that's the topic on that one so i have some additional interviews coming up with people and and i'm always looking for people that I know that I think will be able to talk about some interest in their life that I am somewhat already aware of so that it can be an interesting conversation for the people to listen to. Those are more or less the things that are coming up. And then I plan on introducing some more storytelling from my life experiences on the podcasts as well. I'm finding that that's a different style when I do that. And so I think I'm going to write out most of my stories and then read from them whereas the other ones are all impromptu, as it were. Remember the key thing when you're reading, talk with your hands. Yeah. (laughs) Voice inflection. Yes. What I always tell people, because I can tell uh, some podcasts I listen to, and the person will be reading from the script, and they will be talking like they belong on Futurama. And and, um, watch Robin Williams when he does his his cartoons if you ever see him in the booth he's sitting there flailing his arms around and he's throwing it up and he's turning and he's he's moving his body around and it's causing voice inflections he's a great person to learn from 
I, I am a member of Toastmasters and have been a member for two years, and there's a great deal of skill learned in how to give speeches that can be also used in podcasting. And that's why I say I still have to evolve the storytelling part a little bit because I, I write them out. They're not done impromptu, but I need to develop a little more flair in them, I think, because they're not as energetic as as the interviews or the technical commentary are. So I'm noticing my storytelling needs to be refined a little bit more. So those may be a little slower forthcoming. And, and there is a difference between public speaking and speaking behind the microphone. Some people that are great public speakers get behind the microphone and stammer and stutter because they're used to an interaction with the audience that's not there when you're doing that in podcasting. You know, you're not getting any instant feedback. It's always different when you don't have anybody looking back at you, mm -hmm. and so there's that element to it. Plus, there's other factors, I think, that... So it's an evolving an evolving skill for me to do these podcasts. I like it, but I know I'll, I'll be on a continual learning curve for some time because I'm still adapting. Can you tell our listeners where to locate your podcast and website? My podcast site's name is Digital Passages Podcasts, and it's off of my digitalpassages.com domain slash weblog slash index dot html. And that will be a link in the show notes for all of you that didn't write that one down fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> If you type in Don Larson and Google, that's D-O-N-L-A-R-S-O-N, I'm usually in the top three. And one way or another, you'll find me or find my podcast, because if you end up on the Time Out of Mind site, there's a link there to Digital Passages Podcast. So it's fairly easy to find me. What hardware and software are you using today to create your podcast? Okay, I use a Mac G4 933 megahertz. I run the new Mac OS Tiger 10.4.1. I use... Radio as my weblog and RSS creator for the podcast dissemination. Uh, that's pretty much the process. It's fairly simple. It isn't very difficult at all. Of course, I've been doing this things a long time with weblogs and that, so I enjoy it. Anybody can actually get into this. And then when I, I use Final Cut Express to create my audio portion, and then I downsample it and down encode it using another third party utility to create an MP3 out of it, and then I upload it. That's pretty much it. Okay. What advice would you like to offer out to someone that's looking to start a new podcast? Anyone that wants to start a new podcast, there's plenty of different kinds of apps to help you do that, regardless of what platform you're using. And just take a stab at it. You don't have to be perfect. You'll probably make mistakes, because I know I have. And just keep going through it. Publicize it as much as you can. Get your name out there. Tell people about your podcast. If you have user group, try to mention it at the user group. Whatever your opportunity is to promote your site, do so. And I think you'll find over time that if you're providing information that's interesting, you will attract an ever-growing audience. So go ahead and do it, because it's a lot of fun. Well, Don, thank you very much for coming on the show. Well, thank you, Robert, and you have a good day and a good Fourth of July weekend. Uh, you too. Well, folks, that concludes our interview with Donald Larson from the Digital Passages podcast. Please check out his podcast at digitalpassages.com. Don, thanks again for coming on the show. And on our next show, our guest will be Andrew from the Exit 50 podcast. And at the end of today's show, we're going to be going ahead and playing a promo from the Typical PC User podcast. So please stick around and listen to that and come back next time and listen to the Exit 50 interview. I'd like to take a few seconds to thank everyone who went over to Podcast Awards and voted for Podcast 411 and all of the other podcasts that have been on Podcast 411 and have supported us over the past six, seven months. Thank you, everyone, for going there. I know it was a pain where they had people voting every day. Um, hopefully, next year, Todd will correct that and clean it up a little bit and only have one vote per person, period, for the entire time. But again, thank you, everyone who went in there and voted uh, for us once, and a real thank you for everyone who voted multiple times. Well, that's going to do it for us today. As always, I'm your host, Rob, with Podcast 411, reminding you to listen different. Do you want to get those relatives that always ask you how to fix their PC problems off your back? Then send them to my podcast, Typical PC User Podcast, at www.typicalpcuser.com. Help for the rest of us.